Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Nikon FM10. It was made for Nikon by Cosina, and like a lot of other cameras. It's based on the Cosina CT1 Super. Other than the lens mount, it has more in common with this Dakota than other Nikon SLRs. Dakota's a Ritz camera private brand like Quantaray. Uh, Cosina uh, did some mods uh, for Nikon. You'll see a few other cameras that have these upper end features. Uh, it has a meter activation button, get the field preview button, and this multiple exposure switch. Wikipedia says it was first available in 1995, and it was available at least until 2015, maybe 2017. And there may still be some new old stock in the sales pipeline. This camera is still up on Nikon's uh, USA site for $569.95. Uh, it's for the camera, the kit lens, a case, and a battery. I only got the half case with mine. But it shows out of stock if you click on buy it now. Uh, they do definitely have factory refurbished kits. Uh, that's for U.S. $399.96. You can find used kits for $100 to $200 depending on their condition and completeness. Bodies only, they're all over the place. You know, $25 bucks if there's something a little bit wrong with it to $100 uh, if it's in really nice shape. This really is an FM10, even though it's missing the, the label here. First I thought someone was trying to be more discreet with it, you know, so it wouldn't get stolen or something. But then I thought, well, why would they leave Nikon up here? Then I realized it had some pink nail polish spilled on it, and they were just trying to get it off, and it took off the finish. Um, there's still a little bit on the shutter speed dial, but other than being a little bit sticky, it doesn't really affect it. The kit lens that this normally sold with was a Zoom Nikkor 35-70mm to 70 millimeter, uh, so 3.5 to 4.8. The lens was also made by Cosina. So it's not a true Nikkor, um, but Cosina makes current Voigtlander lenses and they know what they're doing. Um, I didn't get a lens with this kit, um, so I've been using this pancake version of the Series E 50 millimeter f1.8. I'll run through the specs pretty quickly since the ProMaster 2000 PK Super and the ProMaster 2500 PK Super that I already reviewed, they're basically the same camera. It has a vertically traveling metal shutter, goes from one second to two thousand, one two thousandth of a second plus bulb, has cable release socket. All those speeds are mechanical. Uh, the winder standoff turns on the meter and enables the shutter button. It's powered by two 1.5 volt batteries. LR44s work just fine. You can use the SR44. They last a little bit longer. It's fully manual. That's only needed for the metering. Um, like the other bodies based on this, it has a dot, a plus, and minus. So basically you're chasing the green dot in the middle, just plus, a lot over, dot plus, a little bit over, and the same in the negative direction. Uh, it has a pretty good viewfinder. It's a matte field with a micro prism around that, and then a split image in the middle. This split image is straight horizontal. Uh, some variants of that Cosina body will have that kind of diagonal. Uh, it has a single contact flash hot shoe. It sinks at 1 125th of a second. Uh, ISO is settable. You lift the ring around the speed shutter dial from ISO 25 to 3200. Um, the Super in the uh, Cosina version uh, means it has a self timer, and this does have it 10 second self timer. And the features that they did for Nikon that not all the CT1 super based bodies have, uh, depth of preview, depth of field preview button here, 
that's nice if you need to see or if you're using a macro extension uh, like I did with some pictures uh, for this camera. Multiple exposure. It's nice that it does it. It's a little bit of a pain to use. You take your first shot and then you hold this little lever back as you wind and that cocks the shutter without actually moving the film. So that if I had film in it right now, that would have just been a double exposure. Um, maybe unique to Nikon's version of this is this metering button to the left of the lens. It seems kind of like a why bother because a half press does the same thing, but it works even if you don't have the meter, uh, the winder meter enabler in the standoff position and you don't have to hold the shutter while you turn the shutter speed dial you know if you're working in aperture priority that can be pretty clunky because you definitely you're either doing this or you got to take your eye away from the viewfinder that way if you use that and you need to adjust your speed then you can just use one finger and chase the dot and you're metered. Um, the other way of doing it's a little bit clunky so that's actually a nice feature. That's pretty much it. My first roll in this was kind of a bust. I pulled some ISO 800 film, uh, some old Kodak film out of a single-use camera and I made the mistake of shooting it at ISO 800. I know film loses speed with age if it isn't stored properly but this was really sad. It must have been stored at the bottom of a compost pile. Um, my second roll, I shot a half roll of T-Max 100 in it, and that was much, much better. Just a reminder, uh, Worldwide Pinhole Photography Day falls on April 28th, the last Sunday in April here in 2019. So get out there and clue something together and take a pinhole picture on Pinhole Day. I'll see you then.